Knock, knock. Hi guys. As a dermatologist, a common question I get is how do I test my skin type at home? I'm dermatologist Dr. Abby Waldman from Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and the answer is quite straightforward. Basically, you're going to wash your face with a gentle cleanser, you're going to pat it dry, and you're just going to wait 30 minutes to an hour. After that time, you're going to ask yourself, how does my skin feel? If it feels very tight and dry, like you can barely move your face, then you have dry skin. If you look and it actually looks oily, um, you can see some shine to it. Maybe you could take a tissue paper and actually pat oil, then you have oily skin. If you have some areas that are oily and some areas that feel really tight, maybe you have combination skin, or if you feel nothing, you feel neither dry nor oily, also combination skin. Now there are some scenarios that we will discuss at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Those are scenarios where you may think you have combination skin, but you don't really. And that's because you may have some other skin condition like seborrheic dermatitis or rosacea that really can sort of affect what you see on this skin test, making you think you have combination skin. So stay tuned to the end and we'll discuss those scenarios. But now that you know how to test your skin type, what do you do with that information? So sometimes skin type can be used just as a marketing ploy, a way for different skincare to sell you products. But that doesn't mean that knowing your skin type is not useful in choosing a skincare routine. So we're gonna go through the different scenarios starting with dry skin, going to oily skin, and then combination skin, where you might find that your skin type really does help you choose which products to use, but also how to use them. And one thing to keep in mind, your skin type can change throughout your life. Usually the younger you are, the oilier your skin is going to be, and the older you get, the drier your skin can be. The climate, the part of the country you live in, the part of the world you live in, with dry, cold climates being the most conducive to dry skin, and hot, humid climates being the most conducive to oily skin. So let's get into dry skin first. So if you have dry skin, if you feel so tight, like you were desperate for moisturizer after that 30 minutes, if you ran to the bathroom and just smothered your face in Vaseline right after doing this test, then you definitely have dry skin. What that suggests is that your skin barrier, that outer brick wall is not entirely intact. That could be because it's so dry out that it's pulling moisture out of your skin, leaving that dried riverbed look, that dried cracked look, and that dried feeling. It could be that you're just aging and that your skin is not making the things that you need to maintain your skin barrier. It could be genetic and that your body is not making everything that it needs to maintain a skin barrier. And that's common in eczema. Uh, it's common in a condition called ichthyosis. Or it could just be from using really harsh ingredients, you know, using retinoids and glycolic acid and things that are just stripping that outer layer and basically causing little holes in that skin barrier, making it feel tight and dry. And literally the water is evaporating out of those holes, leading to dry skin. So here are three things that you need to keep in mind if you have dry skin. So the first is be careful with active ingredients. The name of the game with dry skin is gonna be low and slow. And this is when using chemical exfoliants like AHA, BHA, when using retinoids, even when using vitamin C and azelaic acid, things that don't always cause irritation or sensitivity. If you have really dry skin, you may not be able to tolerate even those basic ingredients. So start always with the lowest percentage, the lowest strength you can use and start slow. I'm talking like once a week and see how you do. The second tip is always use a moisturizer. The thicker, the better. Ingredients you're gonna look for are ceramides, squalene, hyaluronic acid, and urea. And you may consider using a barrier cream a few times a week in order to better support your skin barrier. What a barrier cream is, is it's almost like having saran wrap on your face. It causes uh, an occlusion of the outer layer and it prevents that water loss. It prevents things from the outside getting in. Barrier creams can be as simple as Vaseline or Aquaphor. I really like Cicaplast Balm by La Roche Posay, but many different companies have these barrier creams, which again, kind of help you just repair that skin barrier. You don't want to use any other active ingredients on the night that you use a skin barrier cream. 
And the third tip is that you may want to avoid common skin allergens like fragrance or formaldehyde releasing preservatives. I would consider this in the case where you just can't seem to tolerate anything. Any product you use, your face gets pimply and dry and rashy and uncomfortable. If that is you, it may be that your skin barrier is so damaged that anything you put on it from the outside is causing irritation. And you may even have a component of a contact allergy that's kind of causing a vicious cycle where it gets worse by using certain products. It's a lot of work to look at all the ingredients on your skincare products to make sure you're avoiding fragrance, to make sure you're avoiding formaldehyde releasing preservatives, which even that list is 12 long. You'll have to Google it. You have to look against each one. I find that the brands that are best for this scenario, sensitive skin, where just everything is causing reaction are Vanna cream and they have many different options within their Vanna cream brand. I like Figgy, which has moisturizers and face wash for sensitive, very dry skin, as well as Ruddy, which has a moisturizer for very sensitive, dry, irritated skin. Okay, so now let's just build a skincare routine for dry skin. So a typical anti-aging routine would be wash in the morning, wash your face with either you know a gentle cleanser or just water. For added moisture, you may consider a hyaluronic acid or a snail mucin, and you're gonna apply those on damp skin, and then you'll lock it in with a moisturizer. Don't worry, I'll include all the links to these products that I usually recommend in the description. And you're gonna lock that all in with a moisturizer and sunscreen. I do find for sunscreen, mineral sunscreens tend to be a little bit less irritating if you're really so dry and your skin barrier is so damaged where any sort of chemical that gets in is irritating it, mineral sunscreens tend to do a little bit better than chemical sunscreens. So in the evening, you're gonna double cleanse if you wear makeup. You're gonna again bring out that hyaluronic acid serum or that snail mucin. You're going to layer that and then put your retinol or retinoid on top of that moisture layer. And that's gonna protect your skin a little bit when you're using an irritating ingredient. Again, with retinol or retinoids, you're gonna start with dry skin, low and slow. So retinol 1%, for a tretinoin, you would use something like 0.025%, you know, really the lowest percentage you can use, pea size amount, spread evenly across the face. And then you're gonna lock that in with your moisturizer on top. So basically creating kind of a retinol sandwich. How slow should you introduce your retinol? Real slow. You can check out this video here on how to introduce and use retinoids. So you're gonna go every three nights for a month, every two nights for a month, and then every night as tolerated. And you might not ever get there. You might just be in that three to five times a week treatment for retinols, and that is more than good. And then you're gonna play around with exfoliants if you want. You know, again, using an AHA, BHA on a night you're not using retinols, maybe once a week. You know, if you have really dry skin, probably anything more than that, and you're just going to make your dry skin worse. You know, also play around with barrier creams. If you find that you're really on the far end of the dry skin spectrum, using a barrier cream such as the Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm a few times a week, or using just Vaseline, that's called slugging, when you just put Vaseline all over your face at night and go to bed, it's a great way to rebuild your skin barrier and um, just don't do it when you're doing any other active skincare. So moving on to oily skin. Oily skin tends to be caused by a robust sebum production. So what is sebum? Sebum is produced by the sebocytes, which are near the hair follicle, and they open up and put sebum on your skin and it is a lubricant, this oil on your skin that causes that beautiful glow. But there is too much of a good thing. You can be too oily if that pore blocks and all that oil is trying to come out, that can lead to acne, pimples. Oily skin tends to be triggered by things that are the opposite of dry skin, right? So if you are in a very hot climate, a very humid climate, you are going to be more inclined towards oily skin. If you are an adolescent and your hormones are changing, that is going to trigger oily skin. If you are another part of your life where you have hormones changing, fluctuating, like menstruation, if you are in menopause, if you are pregnant, all of those hormonal changes are going to change how oily your skin is. And also oily skin is just genetics. Blame it on your parents. 
So here again, three tips when choosing and using skincare for oily skin. And then we'll discuss a skincare routine at the end. So the first is if you have oily skin, you're gonna have a much higher tolerance than your dry skin friends for most ingredients. You are gonna be able to more freely use irritating active ingredients like retinoids and glycolic acid and salicylic acid and benzyl peroxide. You are gonna be able to sort of have a, a wider range of options because usually your skin is not going to dry and shrivel up just from introducing something from the outside. So that's the good news. You may be able to exfoliate with AHA, BHA a few times a week. And this can actually remove some of the dead cells and turn over the skin and make sure that that robust production of oil doesn't get stuck and cause acne. Retinoids, retinol, those are gonna be your friends. Those are gonna dry your skin out more, reduce the appearance of the pores, reduce the sebum production, and really be your friend in controlling oiliness and controlling acne. You may be able to tolerate on the stronger side of retinoids, such as a tretinoin 0.05 or a tretinoin 0.1%. The over-the-counter retinoid that can be really helpful for controlling that sebum production is adapalene. It goes by different brand names. I'll include it in the description. So two, you may find it really difficult to find a moisturizer and sunscreen that doesn't make you feel oily. That's a common complaint I get. You know, I can't find something that doesn't either cause me to break out or make me feel super oily. So unlike your dry skin friends where the thicker moisturizer, the better to lock in that moisture, you're gonna go for the other end of things. You're gonna go for the thinner, the better. You're gonna look for a moisturizer that doesn't hold its form. It should be kind of liquidy where you, you know, turn it on its side and it like drips off. Same with a sunscreen. I actually love these La Roche-Posay Anti-Helios because it's a liquid. They come in both mineral and non-mineral forms. There's tinted forms, um, but this stuff is really thin. It's like drips out. It tends not to occlude the skin. I find that for acne and for really oily skin, they tend to be very mattifying. They'll create kind of a matte look. So really good for oily skin. So again, you're gonna have to work a little bit harder when it comes to finding products that don't make you more oily, but you really still should be using a moisturizer and a sunscreen, especially if you're using other active ingredients or if you're gonna be out in the sun. Three is, Unlike your dry skin friends, you are probably going to be less sensitive to ingredients like fragrance and other allergens like formaldehyde releasing preservatives and other allergens, alcohol, things that are often in skincare. So that's the good news. Of course, you're not totally exempt from contact allergies from skincare. So if you do feel like your skin keeps breaking out from one thing, do pay attention to that. You know, of course you could always play around with excluding certain ingredients. If you have an inkling that your skin is becoming sensitized to one of those ingredients, but the good news is you're probably going to be less inclined to form these allergies from using skincare because your skin barrier is in better shape. So what is a typical anti-aging, anti-acne routine? for oily skin. So in the morning, you're gonna wash with a benzyl peroxide wash like Penoxyl or a salicylic acid wash. You're gonna apply a vitamin C serum or a niacinamide serum, and then follow that with a moisturizer. Again, the thinner, the better. I like this pure and simple, make fresh. Um, it's a very liquid moisturizer. Um, and again, sunscreen, more liquid, the better. So it's not really occluding that oily skin. And for that, I like La Roche-Posay. Uh, anti-helios. At night, you are gonna to wanna to double cleanse if you are wearing sunscreen or makeup. And yes, you can use an oil-based cleanser if you have oily skin. Then you're gonna put on a pea-sized amount of your retinoid. Again, you can tolerate probably higher strengths like adapalene or tretinoin, point. 05 or 0.1%. Those are prescription. Adapalene is not prescription, at least in the United States, but certainly retinol over the counter 1% is also going to be help with drying and keeping oiliness at bay. You're going to want to follow again with that really simple, very thin moisturizer. And then you're going to tolerate using an AHA, BHA chemical exfoliant more than your dry skin friends. You know, again, using something like glycolic acid to exfoliate a few times a week, maybe two to three times a week, opposed to just that zero to one time a week for your dry skin friends. Okay, now on to combination skin. 
So combination skin just means that you are in the gray zone in between dry skin and oily skin. So that can be a pretty wide zone, right? So you may watch this video and see features of both of these things in your skin type. And it could be different at different times of year, right? So in the winter, you might find you fall in that dry skin category. In the summer, you might fall kind of more into that oily skin category or throughout the cycle of your month, depending on when your hormones are changing, you again may find you kind of flip to one side or the other based on sort of where you are in that continuum, in that gray zone. So instead of running out and buying products that are aimed at combination skin, I urge you to kind of really think of where you are on that continuum. Think of it like a seesaw where one side's dry and one side's oily. And think about the skin you have right now instead of sort of this concept that you have combination skin and kind of tweak your routine to include more or less of one of these routines. So if you're there right there in the middle and you have a skin type test that you just feel neither dry nor oily, God bless you, you have normal skin. And a basic routine for you would be a gentle cleanser in the morning, some vitamin C serum, a moisturizer, sunscreen, and then at night, you know, again, double cleanse, maybe try a hyaluronic acid serum, you put on your retinol 1%, put on your moisturizer and you're done. Now, if you do this and you feel like eh, you're getting a lot of oiliness, maybe add a salicylic acid cleanser in the morning instead of a gentle cleanser. If you do this routine and you're like, oh, I can like barely move my face, play around with barrier creams a few times a week so that you really reinforce your skin barrier. So again, it's listening to your skin and kind of figuring out where you fit in that continuum. Now, more often than not, I find that people think they have combination skin, but they actually have some sort of skin condition that is treatable. And the most common examples of this are seborrheic dermatitis and rosacea. So hear me out. A very common scenario is that you test your skin and it's oily, right? Most of the areas are oily. You maybe had a lot of acne when you were younger, but you have these dry patches of skin on your face, usually around your eyebrows, maybe in between your eyes, along the nasolabial folds here, along the nose, on your ears, in front of your ears, and along your scalp. So you say, I have combination skin, right? I have oiliness, and then I have all these dry areas. But it is misleading because that condition is called seborrheic dermatitis, which is a common condition where it's a reaction your skin has to normal fungus on the skin. And once you treat that, it'll go away. So it's not dry skin, it's actually kind of in this oily category where your oily skin is reacting to the fungus it has on it. You wash usually with a head and shoulders shampoo or wash with Nizoral shampoo. That typically does the trick. There are topical antifungals you can use and even prescription antifungals. If that doesn't do the trick, you can talk to your doctor about those. And once you treat that condition, it'll go away. Another very common scenario that I see is people will test their skin and they're like, man, I feel like I have dry skin. I am rushing to get that moisturizer on. It feels so tight and uncomfortable after a half an hour of no moisturizer. That is hell. But my skin is breaking out. It's breaking out in a lot of pimples and I have pimples on my nose and my cheeks. And so I think I have combination skin because I'm having pimples and breakouts, but also my skin feels very dry. When in reality, it's a condition called rosacea, which can form little pimples that look just like acne, except they do tend to favor kind of more the central face. And unlike acne, which is sort of related to sebaceous glands and blocking the pore, rosacea is usually a reaction to either parasites on the skin, bacteria, on the skin, they can be a reaction to heat, sun, foods, spicy foods, coffee, alcohol, um, inflammatory gut conditions. It can be related to other things going on in the body or coming from the outside. And there's a wide range of treatments for rosacea, particularly this type of papular pustular rosacea, usually involving either topical antibiotics or topical antiparasitic agents like ivermectin and controlling those outside triggers that will clear up those pimples and reveal sort of the normal 
skin type that you have underneath. Now, there are other different scenarios like this where a dermatologic condition kind of masks your skin type. And so just know that so that if things aren't really making sense to you, you may consider one of those scenarios. So let me know in the questions if you still have questions about skin type. Please like this video if you got value out of it. Um, subscribe if you want more videos like this on how to take care of your skin. I'll include links in the description to some of the products we discussed as well as others that I recommend for the different scenarios we discussed today. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman, be well.